In the previous episode, we looked at the origins of Jadis, where she came from, how she got to Narnia, and how she spent her first 900 years in exile. If you haven't seen the first part of this series yet, check out the link below. It's a fascinating backstory and there's a ton of detail you don't want to miss. Today, we're going to pick up where we left off and then spend some time talking about Jada's time as the tyrannical false queen of Narnia. So let's get started. It's time to leave the Shadowland behind and step into a world that's more real than our own. It's time to follow me into the wardrobe. When we last left Jadis, she had fled Narnia and escaped into the wildlands of the north. This self-imposed exile was due to the fact that Jadis was driven far away by the silver fruit of the Tree of Protection. For 900 years, Jadis remained hidden in the wildlands of the north, waiting until the day the Tree of Protection would finally die. During that time, she grew in her knowledge of the dark magic. She amassed an army of followers, mostly northern creatures and other Narnian exiles and traitors, and laid in wait until her plans could be carried out. And finally, in the Narnian year 898, the Tree of Protection finally died, and Jadis made her way back into Narnia. It didn't take long for Jadis to make her name known. By the year 900, only two years after her return, Jadis had conquered Narnia and named herself the Queen of Narnia and Empress of the Lone Islands. She no doubt accomplished this through brutality, insurrection, and terror, and by use of her powerful magic. In one of her most terrifying and awesome displays of power, Jadis cast an enchantment spell over Narnia, which caused Narnia to be covered in perpetual ice and snow. This season would be known as the Long Winter, lasting 100 years, and its oppressive cold and darkness had the strategic effect of keeping the people of Narnia in a state of hopelessness and submission. Perhaps just as intentionally, the spell also ensured that no silver apple trees would be able to grow in Narnia. Jadis was even able to use her magic to prevent Santa Claus, or Father Christmas, from entering Narnia, thus preventing him from offering any sort of aid to potentially rebellious Narnians. Jadis also completely drove all humans from Narnia, either by banishment or genocide. She did this in order to prevent the fulfillment of the prophecy which foretold that she would someday be overthrown by two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve. This prophecy, known as the Golden Age Prophecy, states, Wrong will be right when Aslan comes in sight. At the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more. When he bears his teeth, winter meets its death. And when he shakes his mane, we shall have spring again. When Adam's flesh and Adam's bone sits at Care Paravel in throne. The evil time will be over and done. It doesn't have to rhyme, it's a prophecy. It was during this time that Jadis became known as the White Witch by the Narnians. And from the throne of her newly built palace, she ruled Narnia with an icy fist, establishing a secret police, a network of spies, and performing capital punishment on any who would go against her with the use of her magic wand. Jadis's magic was mysterious, and her abilities were very diverse. As we discussed before, she could turn snow into food, a powerful ability that must have been useful as a means of control in an icy land where food must have been scarce and difficult to produce. She was also able to change the appearance of living creatures, either by shape-shifting spells or some sort of mental illusion, as she did when she hid herself and her dwarf from Susan and Lucy by changing herself to look like a boulder and her dwarf to look like a tree stump. She was also very knowledgeable in the deep magic, and because of the deep magic, she had the ability to claim ownership over any traitors or her willful followers. And with this ownership, she was given the right to kill any being that belonged to her. However, as she would one day discover, her knowledge of the deep magic was fatally incomplete. Jadis' most infamous and terrifying incantation was done with the use of her wand, a spell of petrification, turning any living creature into something like stone. The spell didn't kill the victims, it only froze them in a state of dreamlike suspended animation. Interestingly enough, Jadis once cast a similar spell on herself in Charn, which could only be broken by the ringing of an enchanted bell. Because of her infamous magical power, Jadis' rule of Narnia remained completely unthreatened for nearly 100 years. The people of surrounding countries, including the powerful Enterer of Calamarin himself, 
had heard of her terrible magic and did not dare approach Narnia, let alone to attack her. And with no humans to be found in Narnia, there was no one to challenge her throne until that fateful day in the Narnia year 1000 or the Earth year 1940, when Jadis came across a young son of Adam named Edmund. She learned that he had come to Narnia through magic and secretly understood that he was almost certainly one of the four humans that had been foretold in the Golden Age prophecy. Through lies, manipulation, and magical deserts, the White Witch convinced Edmund to bring his brother and sisters to her and her palace between the two hills to the north. When Edmund ultimately failed to bring his siblings to the queen, she flew into a rage, taking Edmund with her as her prisoner. Meanwhile, something strange was happening in Narnia. The snow was melting, and quite possibly, for the first time in a thousand years, the queen's magic was weakening. Aslan was on the move. Sensing the growing hope, the Narnians rallied together and formed a large army filled with Narnians of all sorts. Centaurs, leopards, unicorns, eagles, badgers, beavers, and bears. Narnians of all shapes and sizes joined together to fight against the White Witch. History would record this as the beginning of the Narnian Revolution. The long winter had finally come to an end. Realizing that her power was fading, Jadis made a desperate attempt to prevent the fulfillment of the prophecy by eliminating one of the two sons of Adam. She would sacrifice Edmund the traitor on the stone table, as was her right according to the laws of the deep magic. But in a private conference, Aslan proposed an exchange. He would take the place of Edmund on the stone table, sacrificing his own life so that Edmund could live. Of course, Jadis eagerly accepted this proposal. Besides being able to momentarily satisfy her own bloodlust, if she were able to kill Aslan, there would be no one in the entire world as powerful as she. With Aslan dead, she would truly become the Queen of Narnia and the Empress of the world. That night, Jadis gathered her minions and giants and werewolves. Then, she once again took the high ground on the hill at the stone table, just as she had done thousands of years before on the steps of the palace at Charn. And as Aslan lay down to accept his fate on the stone table, she once again committed a deplorable act. With a single plunge from her dagger, she stabbed Aslan in the heart and killed the great and noble lion. With the commander of the Narnian army now dead, Jadis wasted no time. That morning, she led her troops to the fords of Baruna and attacked the Narnian army, now led by King Peter. For a time, it certainly seemed that Jadis' army had the upper hand. They were larger in number and more brutal in tactics. However, if Jadis was aware of what had taken place at the stone table that morning, she may have laid down her weapons and fled at that very moment, because earlier that day, as witnessed by Susan and Lucy, Aslan had come back to life, and at this very moment he was bringing reinforcements. All the loyal Narnians who had once been turned to stone by the witch had been awakened by Aslan, and now those lions, dwarves, centaurs, and even the giant Rumblebuffin were now joining in the fight. Aslan let out a great roar that shook all of Narnia from the western lamppost to the shores of the eastern sea, and he flung himself upon the White Witch. And in an instant, Jadis was no more. The Narnians had won the war, the Pevensies had taken their rightful thrones as the true kings and queens of Narnia, and the White Witch, the false queen of Narnia, the Empress of Charn and the Terror of Worlds was dead. The legend of Jadis would live on in Narnia for hundreds of years. During the time of Caspian X, a hag, a werewolf, and a dwarf called Nicobric even attempted but failed to resurrect her ghost. But whenever her story of dark magic and brutal tyranny was told, there was always another story to be told alongside it. The story of a lion named Aslan, who with magic more powerful and a heart more bold, finally put an end to the White Witch of Narnia. Well, that's all the time we have for today. If you wanna join us for our next trip into the wardrobe, be sure to subscribe to this channel. If you like this video, share it with a friend and leave a comment below. Let us know what character we should discuss next or any other ideas you have for the channel. And be sure to join us next time as we take another journey into the wardrobe.